integrated with the limbs for drugs data at the various facilities to ensure continuum of care. One of the big advantages of what we have done with limbs is that it really provides us a very solid foundation for telemedicine in this country. And so you're seeing NHIA beginning to put in place uh, a, 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 the me telemedicine architecture for this country. And it's going to save the health service a lot of money and free up. Ghana is blessed with a vice president who is so intelligent when it comes to technology. loving mercies. We thank you once again for bringing all of us together among us. We thank you for the life of this whole nation and for the life of this. Your grace will be abound for us. That in all things that we do will be in. Thank you very much, Reverend James Okai. Ladies and gentlemen, today is also another historic time we're going to have in Ghana. We are commissioning the blessed to have a high-profile dignitaries to be with us in this program. Ladies and gentlemen, with a singular honor, let me introduce... the Vice President of this country, 
His Excellency, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. Please, let's give him a resounding applause to welcome our Vice President to this program. He's ably been He's ably being supported by his team of members from the government. And we have, we are blessed to have the Honorable Minister of Health, Honorable Dr. Okoboy. Let's welcome him with a big round of applause. We can have the Chief Director of Ministry of Health, Alhaji Hafiz Adam. Please, let's welcome him. Mr. Bernardo Koboy, Honorable Minister, Chief Director of the Ministry of Health, Honorable Alhaji Hafiz Adam, Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, Distinguished Directors of the Ministry of Health, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, and esteemed Chief Executives of our teaching hospitals. Representatives of the National Chief Imam, Nime Name, Departmental Unit Heads of Kolebu Teaching Hospital, dedicated health workers, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today we gather to celebrate a transformative moment in the realm of healthcare. This is happening not just within Kolebu Teaching Hospital, but throughout the entire healthcare system in Ghana. This occasion marks a ground citizens. Your Excellency, let me take a moment to recognize your invaluable contributions. Each visit you make to our hospital symbolizes a commitment to effecting life-changing interventions. In February 2023, when you came here, you commissioned a state-of-the-art cancerization lab, procured through your dedicated efforts at the cost of $1 million. For this, the board of the hospital, management, our patients, and everybody do extend our deepest gratitude for equipping us with this life-saving technology. Today's gathering is yet another testament to your commitment Seven December, the royal of Legapuku, Legapuku Terminator, the man himself, daughter, Bernard Oko. God bless you. Jesus, God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. MC. I'll talk to acting CEO. Or do something about your about your position. See you. Let's talk after the program. Your Excellency, our cherished Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the Chief Director of the Ministry of Health, and all other directors, Director General of the Ghana Health Service, other heads of agencies, health sector development partners friends from the media, our cherished Kolebu staff, clinical and non-clinical. I see some of our nursing students also here, our friends from the media, my brother and friend, PC for Ablekuma South. Honorable teacher Ago, distinguished guests, my brother, Samson Jabba, and a lightweight team, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, it is my absolute pleasure to be here with you to commission this transformative project, the Lightwave Health Information Management System. There was a time, not too long ago, when if you wanted to find a patient's records, Sometimes you, need, you even needed a flashlight. You needed a good map. You needed to be very tall so that you can look at corners so you could find a folder for a, push, for a patient that needed 
medical attention. Your Excellency, it was like playing hide and seek with paperwork. And if you are lucky and you find the record, sometimes understanding or deciphering the handwriting of the physician is another challenge. But today, we are all here to say goodbye to those days of the folder. Yes. We are saying goodbye yes. to the folder God era. God bless you. Yes. Yes. We are entering the era of data. The era of digital transformation. Yes. Your Excellency, using folders was always a reminder that we were about 40 years behind the rest of the world. And why do I say 40 years? If you go to the UK or any developed country, they also used folders some years back. Kolebu was built in 1923, almost 100 years ago. When we were using the folder then, the British were also using the folder. But in the early 80s, they let go of the folder. We held on to the folder until you and your boss came around. Yes. And we are happy that yes, the folder yes. era is gone. Uh, Your Excellency, as a practitioner, I just want to be very down to earth and mention some of the serious problems we had with this system of waiting for a book before you see a patient. One of the sources of trouble or infection in hospitals is nosocomial infections, hospital-acquired infections. And one of the routes or vehicles for transmitting infection from one person to the other in the hospital is the folder. Because everybody is touching it. From the records, everybody touches it. You go to the emergency, everybody touches it. They hand it over to you, you also touch it. From there to the lab, everybody starts. And it's picking all kinds of materials to it, till it gets to the pharmacy. So the folder itself was a problem. It was an agent of infection transmission. And we are happy that we have digitized and moved away from this age-old transmission vehicle. We thank you, Your Excellency, for inspiring this transformation drive. There is a lot of frustration just for them to get their folder and for the doctor to see them. We little things that tell us that we too, we day in this world, we've also come of age. Your Excellency, I watched so they will not wait for a folder. They will just type on a laptop or computer and then all your details show. And I called into the station and told them, you don't have to go far, come to Kolebu here. That as a family, we have achieved in Kolebu and beyond. Your Excellency, your leadership has made it possible for us to take healthcare into the digital age. You saw the need to bring healthcare services up to speed. And instead of just tweaking things here and there, you said, let's give this thing a serious upgrade. <laughs> Your Excellency, not a reset, a very serious upgrade. I want to assure you in particular that we will continue to work with this hospital so that this hospital becomes the best in the African continent. We are going to work with you. Africa, God bless you. God bless the team at Lightwave, God bless all our health workers, the nursing brother. God bless our senior brother and inspirational leader, Dr. Yes. Mahmoud Baumia. Yes. 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 God bless our whole life God bless you, Baumia. and make a great and yes. And thank you very much. Yes. Let the Queen call it. Let's do it better for our Minister of Health. Yes. So, in the journal of Lejokuku, there's a letter of Lejokuku. I find the second gentleman of the land, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, he is when it speaks to us. You're welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Please uh, take your seats. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. The honorable. Yeah, thank you very much. The honorable minister for health, Dr. Bennett Okoboy. Director, Chief Director, Ministry of Health, Al Haji Hafiz Adams. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabot Abuaji. The Acting CEO of Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Usu Sechere. The CEO of Lightwave e Health Solutions. My brother, Mr. Sapson Jabba. Directors of Kolibu Teaching Hospital, development partners, our incoming member of parliament for Able Kumasaf, Honorable <laughs> Teacher Abu. <laughs> Hard working healthcare staff here, Nime, Name, friends from the media. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am honored for this opportunity to join you as special guest of honor on this historic day. And it is a historic day to commission the National E-Health Project today. I've been looking forward to this day and I'm Grateful to God for bringing us this far. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth industrial revolution has propelled significant technological advancements that have reshaped societies, including their healthcare service delivery systems, and so on. However, most developing countries, Ghana included, have in the past not been able to adequately harness the opportunities this digital revolution presents. This narrative is however changing under the MPP government's digitalization agenda, which I have been championing over the past eight years. Through the government's resolve to change this narrative, I have spearheaded several initiatives aimed at leveraging digital technologies to enhance governance, service delivery, revenue mobilization, tackle corruption, and enhance financial inclusion and innovation in Ghana. Notable among some of these initiatives I've championed include the Ghana Card, the digital address system, and the Ghana Post GPS and mobile money interoperability. Additionally, I've championed the universal QR code payment system, the paperless support system, and the Ghana.gov e-services project. In the health sector, I've championed initiatives such as the Ghana Card at Birth project, the national e-pharmacy platform, the digital renewal for the national health insurance subscribers, the zipline drone-based medical delivery project, and the lightwave health information management system of the national e-health project, which we are commissioning today. And these have revolutionized various sectors of the Ghanaian economy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very happy today. This is really a great day for Ghana. As you have heard, we confronted a major problem of lack of accessibility by the medical practitioners to data and to timely data on patients. You have the missing folder problem that Dr. Okuboy you know, talked about, and you saw the state in which the folders were being kept, in, you know, how dark some of the places were and how difficult it was 
to retrieve some of these folders. And you could go to the hospital and you'll be told your folder was missing and they couldn't find it. And you had this problem and you had also a, a problem of a lack of networking of the hospitals. And these were the problems we had to attack, attack and settle and resolve amongst others. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited by this LIMS initiative because an integrated electronic medical record system is crucial for a country's healthcare infrastructure. Electronic health records such as LIMS consolidate patient information across healthcare providers, enabling a more coordinated, efficient and safe approach to patient care. Deployment of the LIMS application as part of the National eHealth Project over the last six years has been instrumental in delivering efficient and effective health care in the country, improving health processes and infrastructure across public health facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, in this project on health service delivery has been tremendous so far as you have seen from, from this. Prior to the deployment of LIMS, there were challenges with easy and timely access to patients' health records, portability of patient records from service point to service point, legacy silo systems, inability to track and process revenue, manual process for NHIA claim submission, and limited data for decision making at the various levels of health administration. Ladies and gentlemen, the days where patient records and case history existed in silos are no longer with us. Because of the introduction of the LIMS application, this has facilitated patient record portability to any LIMS site, which assures continuation of care without the patient having to maintain and transport his or her folder across different health facilities. It's also eliminated uh, paper patient, uh, patient folders, elimination of folder container and storage space costs, availability of real-time data at the point of care, improved revenue accuracy. Uh, you've seen some of the hospitals are saying that you know, their internally generated funds, in fact, tripled or doubled as a result of this system. You have also easy and accurate submission of NHIS claims. And this system really reduces fraud in NHIS claims because the whole system is networked and you can track uh, the movement from uh, hospital or department to department. Hospitals and health centers running limbs have reported average improvement of revenue of about 30% uh, with a 35 to 40% improvement in patient wait times, whilst regional and teaching hospitals are reporting over 40% improvement in wait times. Ladies and gentlemen, the deployment of LIMS has improved access to actionable epidemic information in a timely manner. And you know how devastating an epidemic can be to the economy. It can be really, as we saw uh, with COVID, it can be totally devastating. And so the key is timely information so that action can be taken, undertaken. The purpose of real-time surveillance is to, uh, is to advance the safety, security, and resilience of the nation by leading an integrated biosurveillance effort that facilitates early warning and situational awareness of biological events. LIMS has demonstrated that it is capable of tracking and alerting symptom sets of data in real time to, de to the disease surveillance team. The impact on reaction times for controlling disease outbreaks is enormous. Enacting remote re response measures such as quarantine and isolation protocols, 
changed from days or weeks to minutes or hours. Here it is worth noting that savings from early detection of disease outbreaks has the potential to decrease the medication budget of Ghana. This model can be expanded to other diseases so that medication budgets can be better and purchases of medication made at lower prices. As we are all aware, drugs and pharmaceuticals constitute about 40% of the total health budget and drug sales make up 50% of the health revenue. Cost containment measures supported by the project has improved efficient management of drug of total drug inventory. Ladies and gentlemen, the LIM solution allows for real-time validation of a patient's NHIA insurance status, confirming a patient's coverage eligibility at the time of registration saves time and money by eliminating claims from uncovered patient visits. LIMS builds the NHI claim at each point of service during a patient's visit. This means the claim is prepared when the patient encounter is completed. All completed claims are ready for review and submission based on facility process. This has greatly improved filing time and accuracy. In fact, NHIA reported nearly a 30% cost savings due to improvements in accuracy and timely filing at sites running the LIM software. Be because the LIM's application can be completed, reducing fraudulent claims. At this point in time, across the hospitals where the e-health project has already been deployed, Healthcare administrators can track some core parameters such as the availability of beds, nearest access to specific tests and medical services, availability of specialists, and load in on inpatient and emergency wards. A real-time dashboard with these parameters being tracked along with 40 other useful parameters for public health teams is already deployed for use. Ladies and gentlemen, the National eHealth Project has been deployed as a holistic healthcare platform. Real-time data collection from connected limbs facilities has provided health stakeholders and disease control experts a unique opportunity to enable health policy decisions for the entire health continuum in a manner never envisioned before. Ladies and gentlemen, as security and reliability are critical for any mature EMR application, the LIMS application has been developed is the issuance of Ghana card number at birth, which is integrated with the LIMS application as the main patient health record system for capturing of baby and patient parents' details at the various hospitals. And so under the Ghana card at birth, I mean, when the child goes for way in, uh, at that time, the child is able to be given at the point of way in a Ghana card ID and a birth certificate ID at the same time. You know, so that, that was a major reform that we brought in. The National Electronic Pharmacy Platform, which I also launched in 2022, which seeks to ensure a safe and secure access to my medications and pharmaceutical services in the country, is also integrated with the LIMS for drugs data at the various facilities to ensure continuum of care. One of the big advantages of what we have done with LIMS is that it really provides us a very solid foundation for telemedicine in this country. And so you're seeing NHIA beginning to put in place uh, a, 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 the telemedicine architecture for this country. And it's going to save the health service a lot of money and free up time because there are a lot of patients 
who don't really physically need to go and see a doctor. And they could see the doctor from home remotely uh, and, and leave more uh, need, patients who need to see doctors personally uh, the space to do so and it will unclog the, the, the waiting time. So I think the, 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 the telemedicine and the future of telemedicine really is, is upon us with the limbs uh, that has been uh, now uh, put uh, now done. Um, in fact, I, I at this point want to specially, specially, specially thank and congratulate uh, the CEO of Life Wave E uh, Healthcare Solutions, uh, Mr. Samson Jabba. Please take take a bow. This 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 man, this man is a bit special. He's a bit special, he's brilliant, um, he's brought his knowledge to us, leveraging all of this um, e-health uh, solutions to do greater things for Ghana. Ghana is moving to bigger things. In, on Friday, I want to note that Ghana will launch 5G on Friday. 5G. We are moving to 5G, which is a major, you know, really major undertaking for our country. And 5G changes so much uh, for the digitalization agenda because the speed of 5G is 100 times the speed of 4G. A hundred times. So faster downloads, faster uploads. And you look at 5G and it has 1,000 times more capacity than 4G. You know, so it's got capacity for hundreds of thousands of devices um, working seamlessly and communicating. Um, it is set to transform sectors like the health sector, 5G, and what we are doing. Um, it's, this is really going to, to be helped. I mean, what we have done with e-health is going to be really helped with 5G. Health wearables, for example, uh, are able to reliably transmit data in real time to medical professionals. And so you, you will be able to get into a situation where you can transmit data uh, from yourself to your doctor and he'll be able to say, look, maybe you're about to have a heart attack and we better get you into the hospital. Well, sitting you are thousands of miles away, they, 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 they. so we are, we are in a whole new era with 5G uh, coming in. So we're going to continue building on this uh, they, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to acknowledge all of those who uh, have helped to make this possible. And I wish to take this opportunity to commend the Honorable Minister for Health, uh, Dr. Bernard Okuboy, and his predecessor, and his predecessor, Dr. Kweku Ajima Menu, who was working very hard on this project, as well as the Ministry of Health, uh, and the Ghana Health Service for successfully organizing this event uh, along with Lightwave and to look forward to the completion of deployment at the health centers and the CHIPS compounds and private facilities to facilitate better patient outcomes and healthcare delivery across the country. I believe Ghana has reached a major milestone today and I keep saying it is possible. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The service, ladies and gentlemen, Rahim, 
غیر دین آمین Thank you very much. Your MC is Dr. Emmanuel Lloyd Bafo, J. Bafo. We are so grateful for your time. We've come to the end of it, so we're going to sing the national anthem. So let's all rise to our feet. So have your...